feels so fresh to go to a haircut. Oh my gosh, that was so funny. Apparently she is playing the part of a vulva talking to its owner. And if you have to explain the joke, then it's not funny anymore. So I ruined it, I'm sorry. Welcome back to another episode of TikTok's not that bad. Look at the great people sharing good information that we can learn from. I know that you've been waiting for this one after the cringy episode that I posted last time. So let's just jump into it. Okay, so essentially how Baby Hand came to be was really just a fluke, accidental thing. Um, not genetic, not genetical, Maya? English major, okay. Not genetics, not hereditary. Um, essentially my mom's doctors told her that they could not be completely sure, but they would bet that in the womb, my mom's umbilical cord wrapped around my hand, causing my other three fingers to not develop. So when I was born, which was the first time they actually ever saw my hand, they could never see it on an ultrasound or anything because my hand was always coincidentally tucked under or behind me, so they could never see it. But when I was born, my fingers were fused together. You could tell they were two different bones, but they were actually webbed together. And that's called syndactyly, which is essentially just the webbing of two or more um, digits. And then after my first birthday, I had surgery to separate them. And now baby hand is perfect. <laughs> okay, first off, I love her. I love that she is so positively talking about limb differences. I have delivered babies with limb differences and it is so important that we get more information out to the public about this because that's what keeps these people from feeling like they have something wrong with them. Like they were just born this way and it's fine. Second, I too was born with a little bit of syndactyly, although I didn't have the other thing that she's discussing. I have two toes on my left foot, which are fused together. You can't tell unless I show you and I'm not gonna show you, but you should just know that. It makes me a great swimmer. Actually, I'm not a great swimmer, but I, I do actually have that. All right, let's talk about amniotic band syndrome, which I think is probably what she's saying when she's talking about the umbilical cord here. It's not actually that the umbilical cord wraps around the fetus's hand in amniotic band syndrome. And again, I don't know for sure that that's what she's talking about, but it sounds like it. It's where fragments of the amniotic sac or the amnion during development can get wrapped or envelop different arms, legs, toes, fingers, things like this. And eventually over time, as a fetus grows, they get tighter and tighter and they basically cause auto amputation of these parts of the fetus. That can happen with some fingers. It can happen with entire limbs. It can be absolutely devastating if it's severe and the entire fetus is wrapped up in the amnion. It's relatively rare, but we do see it. And I think it's really interesting. And I also think it's really great that she is so wonderfully advocating for acceptance and positivity and learning and interest in limb differences. So go you, amazing job. This is gonna be easy. Question number one, hypertension. Excuse me, Tisha, you said that cardiac will be on the next test. No, this test. Hey. Jesus, um, please help me. Send the Holy Spirit to give me answers or something, please. <laughs> that is me in every med school test I ever took. And also the teacher cracked me up because that's what all my teachers in the middle of the panhandle of Texas sounded like in med school. Also, she is beautiful. What the heck is with all of these amazingly beautiful TikTokers? Like in March of 2018, I had my baby boy and I decided to have my tubes tied. I was having some womanly complications after that, so I decided to opt for a hysterectomy, and I had a hysterectomy in November of 2018, and then two days after that surgery, I was in septic shock. I was on life support, I really don't remember much from this time, but I was on life support, and my blood pressure was basically zero, so they had to give me a bunch of different blood pressure medications to keep my heart pumping but that took all of the blood from my extremities, causing them to die, which is why both legs were amputated below the knee as well as all 10 of my fingers. I spent about six months between the hospital and the rehabilitation center, and here I am. <laughs> wow, that is a story. First, I'm glad that she's sharing that. How brave do you have to be to share something so life altering? I mean, that must be extremely traumatic to think about, much less talk about to 
thousands of people online. She's discussing becoming septic and going into septic shock after having a hysterectomy. That would be a very rare, but not unheard of complication that can happen after any surgery, including hysterectomy, which is removal of the uterus. It sounds like she was very, very sick and that her cardiac system was not working well that her blood pressure was very low and they had to put her on medications to increase that enough to keep her alive. Unfortunately, sometimes decreased blood flow in the extremities can lead to things like this happening. You can also get what we call microthrombus or microemboli, which are tiny blood clots that go out into the capillaries and start to decrease blood flow even further. This is an unfortunate, but luckily extremely rare complication of sepsis and septic shock, which can come from any kind of a surgery or can also happen from other things that aren't surgeries. I'm, I'm appreciative that she's sharing her story and I hope she's doing well and that it's not too traumatic talking about it online because what an amazing advocate. I think a vagina doctor is gonna judge you for your vagina. How special is it? They don't judge. I told them that I do multiple illegal things, such as drink underage and use nicotine. And their automatic reaction was, okay, cool, we'll add that to the report. They also don't have to tell your parents. Because they are literally looking at your private parts, they can tell your parents to leave the room. They can tell your parents to go. And if your mom is like, well, I'll see the records anyway. Just tell your doctor, my mom is being nosy, and they will help you find ways around it. I can genuinely say, because this is one of the most controversial medical fields, because it involves abortions, UTIs, birth control, that kind of stuff, that they will not judge you. A lot of the times, especially when it comes to female uterus doctors, they're dope and they make jokes and they're awesome. And so I would just say go see your OBGYN, even if you're scared, it's healthy for you, I promise. I love the messaging of this video and that, you know, just a person who has a doctor would make it, makes my heart happy. There probably are bad doctors out there who judge people, but they are the rarity, especially in obstetrics and gynecology, particularly for the reasons she discussed. We deal with things on a daily basis that go from absolutely elating and wonderful and great to absolutely heart-wrenching, horrible, terrible. And we do this all the time. We have people tell us things that they wouldn't tell their closest friends. And we take that very seriously. Your trust in your doctor is important. And I hope that me being here is an example of how we're just normal people. And most of us are in this because we truly love this field and we truly love our patients and value our patients. Oh my gosh, uh, that would be a thing. I mean, an, an interesting thing. Thing. Thanks for that suggestion. <laughs> kind of reminds me of earlier today, I was going to wash my hands and I found my almost two year old in the bathroom holding a tampon like in a plastic wrapper. And he was saying, snack. What is it? That's not a snack. It's not a snack. Let me see it. Let me see. I promise you don't want to eat that. It's definitely not a snack. My man, I'm sorry to tell you, you are going to be sorely disappointed if I open that for you because it's not a snack. <laughs> That is definitely not just normal. Now, that being said, galactorrhea, which is leaking milk from the breasts, from the nipples, is something that can be not like terrifying or horrible. I will just tell you some of the common things that we see that cause this. 
She's absolutely right that number one on that list is going to be pregnancy. If we've ruled that out, which is pretty easy to do, the number two on that list is going to be, and maybe not the most common, but the one that we should be most worried about is going to be a prolactinoma. Prolactinomas are teeny tiny little tumors that grow on the pineal gland and produce excess prolactin. This causes elevated levels of prolactin, which leads to milk production. And so the first thing I'd wanna do in this patient is get some labs and check their prolactin levels as well as rule out pregnancy. If we rule those two things out and it's still happening, then we're gonna have a long discussion about a few things. Any medications that you're on that could have this as a side effect, any drugs that you use that could have this as a side effect, particularly THC or marijuana, and any kind of nipple stimulation that's going on. This can be innocuous like not wearing a bra and the nipple constantly rubbing across a loose shirt. If that happens frequently, then that can often cause galacteria or nipple stimulation that is from sexual activity. All of these things can increase the chances of galacteria. If we've gone through all of that and we still don't know what's going on, then I'm going to talk to you about potentially talking to an endocrinologist or a specialist. That won't solve all of them, but it solves a lot of them. So those are kind of our initial worries, concerns, workup, et cetera. So I made a video describing the difference between sex and gender and somebody reported it and it got taken down for a little while, ended up being restored. But you know what? I decided to remake it anyway for those of you that have a crippling fear of anatomy. So people love to say there's only two genders or gender is a binary. And usually what they mean by this is that there's only two sexes because they love to say it's biological, either a male or a female, you have a sausage or a slit. But this is false. A binary by definition says that there's two and there's no overlap, but we know there are intersex people, people born with both anatomies, both a sausage and a slit. So already science says no. Gender can be on a spectrum as it's a complete societal construct. Gender is completely culturally based. This is what tells us if you're a boy, you must like blue and wearing pants. And if you're a girl, you must like wearing dresses and children. And they actually found that the brains of people who are transgender more closely relate to their identity than their assigned gender at birth. Science! I have a whole video about this. I appreciated her talking about it. I think she misses a couple of points, particularly the study about brain um, makeup because it has a little bit of... Um, that's not my favorite study, but I agree, science. Science supports the existence and validity of people who are transgender. And if you want to know more about that, I would highly encourage you to go watch my video, Is Science Anti-Trans? I thought you were kidding! I thought it was a joke! I even wrote it down in my diary! <laughs> Veronica had a very funny joke today! Um... No, my friend, we don't joke about quadruplets. It's not a joke, I promise. If your doctor says there's four heartbeats, it's not a joke. That would be a very, very bad joke, and we don't make that joke. I hope nobody makes that joke. I feel so fresh. You gave me a haircut. What's the occasion? Oh, my fuzzy little peach, we are going for a pap smear tomorrow. And you like this little patch of hair? I like it. It shows maturity, authority. We are alpha. I'm glad you like it, but please this time do not spit out the speculum, okay? Let's get through this in five minutes. It happened like one time, dude, and it's because she was squinting, all right? She was like this, so then I went like this, and then I started to laugh, and the salad spoon started doing this. It was, it, well, accidents happen. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was so funny. I, I'm not following this person because I just like downloaded these that people tag me in and I have to go find her right now and follow her because this is hilarious. Okay, I have now followed the wonderful person who is the ethnic mom. I've seen nothing else she's ever posted, so I hope she's not like a terrible person, but that was very funny. Apparently she is playing the part of a vulva talking to its owner in this video before they go to the gynecologist. And if you have to explain the joke, then it's not funny anymore. So I ruined it, I'm sorry. However, I found that absolutely lovely and hilarious. The part about spitting out the speculum, if someone's pelvic muscles clamp down, the speculum sometimes can come out during an exam. This generally happens if someone is either laughing or crying or closing their legs. So yeah, that's what they're talking about there. Thanks for being here today, guys. If you missed last TikTok video, you can see it by clicking the link right over here. If you're not subscribed, hit that little subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. That's all, that's all I have to say. I'll see you next time, bye.